O come, O come, Emmanuel, indeed. Thank you, Baxter. Well, good morning and welcome to worship at First Baptist Church of Martinsville this first Sunday of the season of Advent. This is the season where we begin our waiting for the coming of Christ at Christmas and the coming of Christ again in our lives. Each week we will light a candle on the Advent wreath to signify hope, peace, joy, and love that Christ will bring into this world through us. This week, our combined adult Sunday school class will be lighting our Advent candle of hope later in the service. You can learn more about that class and how you might join in with them in your bulletin today. If you are our guest today, I hope you have taken a few moments to fill out one of our connection cards and hand that to one of our ushers so that we can get to know you better in the days and weeks to come. I do have a few announcements for us today. The flowers on the Lord's table were given in memory of Marguerite and Ir Irvin Dehart, uh, given by Dawn Dehart and Mona and H.C. Rudder. Tomorrow, November 28th, Monday, uh, our Ladies Lunch and Learn uh, group will begin a four-week Advent study. So ladies, you are welcome to join us in room 105 for an hour-long lunch. We do stick to one hour. <laughs> and a study time together tomorrow, beginning at noon. Also, next Sunday is our annual Christmas dinner, which is back, everyone. We're excited. We will have a deadline for reservations this Wednesday, November 30th, so make sure and get those in. The cost is $11 per person. Uh, children under 10 are free. Following lunch, we'll have our, our library bake sale. So if you haven't already done some baking to provide for that sale for the library, go ahead and do that this week and have them ready for next Sunday. On the missions and outreach side, you'll see you've got quite a few announcements. We have a few ways that we can share Christ's light in the darkness of a very dark season. You know, we fell back. Everything is dark by about five o'clock. How can we share Christ's love and light? This Wednesday, November 30th, is the deadline for giving to the Red Kettle Campaign, which you can learn more about in your bulletin. And on Saturday, December 3rd, so that's this coming Saturday, we will have a booth at Uptown's Fall into Winterfest, and I hope that you will come out and join us for that. We will be sharing about our ministries and our love for this community at our booth, handing out some gifts for children and doing crafts. So if you are able to help with that, please sign up in the church office. You can give them a call or shoot Mary an email, and they'll put your name down to help us out that day. Then we are beginning our missions offering for Heifer International. That will continue through all of December. You can read more about that in your bulletin. And last, we are supporting the Martinsville and Henry County Jail Ministry. We are sharing Christmas cards. Uh, you can see in your bulletin how to write those and how to, how to turn those in. We do have a box in the narthex. So as you are writing your Christmas cards this year, if you will include uh, our jail ministry in your Christmas card writing, I know they would appreciate that from you. There are going to be so many ways to offer love and light and to serve our neighbors in the days to come. So be sure to keep up with those. You'll find announcements in your bulletin every Sunday. You'll receive this information in email if you need to keep up with it electronically. You'll see these posts on social media. So make sure that you are plugged in in ways to share Christ's light this season. Thank you so much, church, for all of the good work you do for the kingdom of God. Let us now call ourselves into God's presence with a responsive call to worship. You can find this in your bulletin. I'll read the regular print and you can respond in the bold print. The day is near. And so do we wait. We wait with hope. For the brokenhearted to be healed, for the downtrodden to be lifted up. We wait in anticipation of our salvation. We wait for the coming of the Christ child. In the meantime, we will sing into the silence. We will light the candle against the darkness. Will you pray with me? God of justice and peace and righteousness, come into our midst this morning. Breathe your breath, your spirit of prophecy, your energy, your enlivening, your very imagination upon us this hour. Wake us up, 
open our eyes, unplug our ears, that we might hear, that we might see, that we might grieve, that we might dream, that we might follow the ways of your extraordinary kingdom. We pray this all in the name of the light of the world, Jesus Christ, who taught us all to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you to stand as you are able and to raise your voice in celebration and anticipation of Christ's coming as we sing number 271, Christ is Coming Like Creation, number 271. Old Testament lesson today is from Isaiah chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. The word that Isaiah, son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest of the mountains, and shall be raised above the hills, and all the nations shall stream to it. Many people shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways and that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth instruction and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations and shall arbitrate for many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares 
and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. O house of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. This is the word of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Our New Testament lesson comes from Romans chapter 13, verses 11 through 14. Besides this, you know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone, the day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of God. Let us live honorably as in the day, not in reveling and drunkenness, not in debauchery and licentiousness, not in quarreling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We light the candle of hope and dare to open the dark places in our lives to the healing light of Christ. May our hearts be prepared for the coming of Christ and the creative, transformative power of hope. Welcome our children to come forward. Come on. Our daddies can come too. That works. <laughs> come on, have a seat. My daddy. Your daddy's busy. Let's sit down. All right. So today you might see some new things in the sanctuary. Tell me what you see that's different this week. Okay, some trees. Now these are special trees. They're called Chrismon trees. And they have Chrismons on them that tell the story of our faith. Um, what else do you see? A um, candle. A different candle. You see some candles. What else do you see? A different candle. Yeah, you got candles. What color are, are, are the cloths up here? Purple. Are they purple? Purple like your dress? Yeah? So you see all kinds of new things in here. We know that Christmas is coming, don't we? Some of you have seen decorations at the store or maybe in town you've seen the wreaths up on the lights. Or I bet you might have even decorated your own house. Or Santa. You're thinking about Santa Claus. We got a lot of Christmas Santa, things that we're thinking about. Lion yeah, San Santa is at the store already. So did you know that in worship, in worship we celebrate what's called Advent. Can you say Advent? Advent. Advent. Advent is a word that means coming. And it reminds us that we are waiting. Can we all put our hands out? We're waiting, waiting for Jesus to be born on Christmas. So for four weeks, four Sundays, one, two, three, four, we prepare our hearts for Jesus to come. 
And we do this in some pretty special ways. So I want you to come with me. We're going to take a little field trip. Let's stand up. Here we go. I want you to take a look at this special wreath. So you've seen wreaths before, but they're usually hung up on the wall like those, right? This wreath sits in a circle. And what do you see around the edges? What do you see around the edges? What are these? Candles. Candles. There's three purple ones and a pink one back here. Yeah. And these are the four weeks of Advent. So every Sunday in Advent, we're going to light one candle just like we did today. See that one? Today's candle is the candle of hope. There are other candles that will be peace and love and joy. And then on Christmas Eve, we light this middle one. What's this one? A special candle. It's a special candle. It's white, and it reminds us that Jesus is the light of the world. We call this the Christ candle or the Jesus candle. So on Jesus' birthday or just before on Christmas Eve, we will light the Christ candle to remind us that Christ came into the world and Christ is going to come again. Jesus is coming. And you know what Jesus did? Jesus came to teach us. Let's have a seat. Teach us to love each other to teach us to serve each other. And so when we are lighting these candles, we remember the kinds of things Jesus taught us. Hope, peace, joy, and love. So we learn to share that light of Jesus with everybody we meet this season. So I want us to sing about sharing our light with the rest of the world just as we're lighting these candles. Can you guys help me sing this little light of mine? Yeah. All right. Let's stand up and let's sing this little light of mine. Ready? Everybody got your light? Light. You guys can help. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little Let's sit down and have our echo prayer before we go back. Ready? Let's put our hands together and you're going to repeat after me. Have a seat, baby. There we go. Ready? All right. Loving God, thank you for coming to earth. Help us to light the world just like you. Amen. Great job, girls. All right, it's time to go back to children's time. I invite you to again stand as you're able and to join as we sing hymn number 347. Tell his praise in song and story, number 347, as we sing together.
if this Advent is really to be about more than just going through the motions of the holidays, then we must get ready for the hope of the world in new and powerful ways. So what can we do to signal our own readiness for the coming of Christ in every place? We can start with our commitment, our total commitment of our whole selves, of our resources, to the cause of God's hope in this world. When we give our financial gifts to this ministry of this church, those benefits travel widely, not just through our connections and our denominations, but also through our own mission and ministry, person to person. There's no impact greater than in our own hearts and lives as we are changed by worship and study and growth and go out into the world to share Christ's light. I invite you to use this time as we commit these offerings to get ready for Christ's arrival, to be prepared to give more, to love more, to be more extravagant with our generosity in our lives. Let us pray together. Thank you, God. Thank you for the wake-up call, reminding us in this season to be ready. Thank you for not giving up on your vision of hope and peace. Thank you for the opportunity to gather each week in your house that we might encourage one another to stay on your path. And thank you for the opportunity to share these gifts for your ministry, that together we might help the world be ready to receive the Prince of Peace, in whose name we pray. Amen.
I don't know about you, but whenever I need to get my entire household out of the house at a specific time, for a specific reason, to a specific place, I struggle. <laughs> and sometimes it's my own fault. I stayed up too late or I took too long myself. But other times I spend an inordinate amount of time in deep discussion about what shoes go with what outfit with literally everyone in the house, except perhaps the dogs who all blissfully get to lay around the house without clothes on all day. And on the days where dress attire is required, it's worse. The four-year-old is mad that she can't pick her own mismatched play clothes and must wear a certain outfit that she didn't get to pick. I can't find anything that fits right. The baby's fussy about her itchy and puffy dress. And Will is asking me questions about his wardrobe while we try to find matching bows and tights and shoes for the girls. <laughs> And knowing what all is going to be required ahead of time is paramount. We need to know how many hours in the morning to allot to this craziness, and thus when to get out of bed and start the day. Because between feeding everyone, cleaning and dressing everyone, loading into the car, driving somewhere, there is this morning two-step we're always doing, and it better be choreographed. <laughs> And I know the realities, too, of not getting ready in time, of the obvious, being late to something, or just being unfinished. Doing your makeup in the car is always a mess. Of trying really bad to get there, everybody's a little frazzled, and you're just trying to catch your breath after arriving to do something immediately. It is a horrible and panicked feeling that I don't want to feel. And it often leads to a general discord and grumpiness from the whole family. And so as I hollered down the hall to Elena this morning, I feel like God is hollering down the hall to us all Advent long. Are you ready yet? I've always wondered why Advent seemed a little sad or drab compared to the rest of the Christmas season that we see around us. We want to dive right into the familiar stories of Mary and Joseph and Bethlehem and stables and shepherds and angels and light up our Christmas scenes depicting Emmanuel, God with us. But Advent says, nope, you're not ready for that just yet. I heard recently from a minister friend that Advent isn't about the past. Even though Jesus was born in the past, it's about the here and the now. How we wait and anticipate the eventual second coming of Christ helps inform our looking back at the first coming of Christ. It's about preparing ourselves for the current and future reign of God in Christ. And we do it now. We prepare for Christmas because we realize that Christ's coming, it's not a one and done event. There's yet more to come, and we need to be ready. Our hearts need to be prepared. Preparing ourselves, getting ready to meet Christ once again, all over again in our lives, these are going to require some work on our part. And both of our texts today are rich with that. The prophet Isaiah, Paul's letters to the Romans, they encourage us to pay better attention to the life of faith so that we, too, are ready for Christ's coming. I read a pastor who saw that there are basically three ways that this passage from Isaiah helps us to prepare us for Christ's coming in the season of Advent. He says first that Isaiah tells us to get ready for Christ's coming by believing in God's promises. You see, Isaiah's prophecies, this passage in chapter 2, we read them a lot at Christmas time because we understand that they were somewhat fulfilled in Christ's coming. But we also know that the kingdom of God began with Jesus' life and yet is not fulfilled totally. We live in a constant state of God's kingdom being already here, 
because Jesus has come and taught us and lived and died and beat death for us, right? We know the story. We know what God's kingdom looks like. How many times did Jesus say it? The kingdom of God is like. And yet there will be a second coming to fulfill it all, to finish the story. So we are between the already and the not yet. We are already and not yet people in the season of Advent. And yet if there's anything that Isaiah was telling the people all those centuries ago, it's that there is a promised one coming, someone who will make it right. God is on your side. In verse 2, Isaiah says, In days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest of the mountains and shall be raised above the hills. Then Isaiah also tells us that we get ready for Christmas by sharing God's priorities. Though Isaiah obviously was speaking to Jewish people at the time, God made it clear that the priority was to reach the whole world. From the promises of Abraham to be as many as the stars in the sky, we seem to understand that God's priorities are well beyond a singular people, though they were chosen to share the message. In verse 2, we read that all the nations shall stream to it, shall stream to the house of God, all the nations. God is seeking to reconcile the whole world to God's self. In that favorite nativity passage, we all quote the angels, I bring you good news of great joy to all people. If telling others about God's kingdom isn't on your heart to do, perhaps you've got some more getting ready to do for Christmas. Verse 3 says, Many people shall come and say, Come, let us go to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways and that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth instruction and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Are we inviting people into God's presence with our lives, teaching them to walk God's paths? If not, Perhaps we're not in line with God's kingdom priority of reconciling the whole world to God. Perhaps we've got some more getting ready to do. Isaiah finally tells us that we get ready for Christmas by personifying God's peace in this world. Verse 4 says, He shall judge between the nations and shall arbitrate for many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. Both Isaiah and Micah prophesied of a time when the nations will reshape their implements of war into implements of peace. So when we move toward peace and reconciliation with God, We make peace with one another as well. This is the kingdom we should all be seeking. After all, it is the birth of Jesus when this peace would again become realized because the Prince of Peace was born. You know it. The angel said, glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace among those he favors. Now, obviously, the world is not at peace right now. And even Jesus pointed out that there would be wars and rumors of wars until he comes again. But the true hope here is that those who know Jesus will know peace and act out that peace in this world, beating swords into plowshares. Do you know peace? Or are you still fighting? Are you fighting politically with other people? Are you fighting literally, seeking more and more firepower rather than beating your swords into plowshares? Are you fighting within yourself, split between competing interests, interests that primarily seek your own welfare 
instead of seeking the welfare of others? If you don't know peace, perhaps you've got some more getting ready to do. But Isaiah is not the only passage we read today. He's been asking some pretty tough things of God's people about being ready. But the Apostle Paul is saying that it's not just about getting ready. It also begins by waking up, by being aware. I think that's what the kids these days are calling being woke. (laughs) Being awake to those things around you that are not part of God's kingdom is how we are woke as Christians. Think of this as a cosmic wake-up call, kind of like those loud phone calls you get in hotel rooms when you set up a wake-up call. Verse 11 says, you know what time it is. Now is the moment for you to wake from sleep. But what exactly are we waking up to? Another pastor I read suggested there are a few things that Paul thinks we ought to wake up to in this passage. The first is to wake up to our theological responsibilities. You see, the whole book of Romans was a letter to the church at Rome, meant to help them address theological conflict, things that came about with these early Jesus followers that didn't quite fit into first century theology very well. And so Paul says, you need to stand out. You need to be different, to be brighter than the rest of the world. And he explains theology well in Romans. You'll find probably his most comprehensive explanation of how to believe there. But Paul says, to be brighter in this world, you need to do it because your salvation is nearer now than when you first believed. In other other words, it's urgent. Wake up. Every day is a gift to recognize that Christ's coming is near. Whether it's tomorrow or a thousand years from now, are we awake enough to even realize that it's near? Have we lit up a room with Christ's love recently? Or are we going through the motions of faith with very little changing internally? Paul expected the Christians in Rome to believe and to share that belief widely. Are we awake enough in our own faith to share what we believe? The second thing we should wake up to, according to Paul, is our moral responsibilities. We don't just auto-shine God's love. There are also some things we need to shed, some darknesses, That's the only way we can shine God's light. Paul tells us here to lay aside the works of darkness. We could spend our whole lives stirring up darkness in this world, creating more, or simply paying it too much attention, giving it too much power in our lives, like we do when we watch the news 24-7. Or we can choose to watch darkness scatter as light hits it because we're living out our faith in ways that bring, if only in small doses, light into a dark world and hope into a hopeless place. And another thing we should wake up to is our relational responsibilities. I love how this pastor put this. He said the first half of verse 13 seems to describe some office Christmas parties. Let us live honorably as in the day, not reveling in drunkenness, not in debauchery or licentiousness. (laughs) And then the second half seems to describe some church business meetings, not in quarreling or jealousy. (laughs) These are all relational issues. If we are living our lives in wasteful extravagance all the time, if we're not stopping to be aware and wake up to the needs of others around us, then we're not ready for Christ. We're not awake to what Christ wants us to be aware of. We aren't awake even to our own needs, much less the needs of others. 
And no, I don't think Paul is demanding here that, Christmas all, that Christians all have dry Christmas parties, okay? <laughs> but he does tell us, you need to live with integrity as a whole person, a person who loves God and neighbor, who shares Christ's light with this world, wherever they are. Otherwise, we're not awake enough to get ready for Christ's coming. Friends, it is time to wake up to God's kingdom and what it looks like in this world. It's time to live in it. It's time to prepare to know Christ once again in our lives. That's what this season of Advent does for us. And yes, it slows us down. It takes away some of the materialism of the season, also important things. But it ought to do so in order to grow our faith. It ought to change us from within, to make us kingdom people always looking for Christ's coming, always looking for the hope in the world. We should be people whose lives are oriented toward God and neighbor. People awake to the needs of this world and ready to take them on. If we wake up, and we get ready, we can generate hope in this world where there has been no hope. We can shine so brightly that the darkness cannot overcome it. So wake up and get ready, church. Amen. I invite you to stand as you're able and to sing our song of response, number 135. Come thou long expected Jesus, number 135. <clears throat> the benediction. Go now and walk in the light of the Lord. Stay awake, for the Lord is near. Put on the armor of light and live openly and honorably. Pray for peace among God's people. And may God clothe you in the light of Christ. May Christ teach you his ways. And may the Holy Spirit keep you alert 
and prepared for the coming of the Lord. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Thank you.